Ghostbusters Afterlife. A Shoki review. I don't know how to do these things. Either way, uh, so last night I saw Ghostbusters Afterlife. I don't know if it was considered an early watch or whatever. It was available on Thursday afternoon and I'm like, I'm going to go. Uh, I figured this weekend probably going to be busy. I didn't want to do whatever. So either way, went and saw it. I did my absolute best to avoid any types of spoilers all throughout the summer, all throughout this past year, since it was initially supposed to come out last year, COVID did rolled out way past the summer uh, blockbuster stage, which is still fine. It came out in a pretty good gap here. You know, we just had the Eternals go by, which technically a blockbuster. You've seen the reviews. Uh, and then it's before Spider-Man and the other things. And Dune has already gone by, by the way. I've watched Dune. I can do a review of that. So this movie, I was doing everything I could to avoid spoilers, even not watching the final, final trailer that they released. Let's just go right off the bat. This movie was fantastic. This movie was everything the 2016 all-female reboot wasn't. What it was, was a love letter to the originals, original, I'll say that, but handing it off to a new generation. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who are going to say, well, this is just episode seven, but for Ghostbusters. And I'm like, yeah, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, as long as they don't episode nine, this will be okay. Never go episode nine. Never go episode nine. Anyways, so... The <laughs> okay, so let me, let me try to organize my thoughts here. So, as I already said, it's fantastic. So, let's just very quickly talk about the cast of characters to a degree. Uh, I think virtually all of the casting in this movie was great. Uh, the young, the young girl, I believe her name is McKenna Grace. She's the one who plays uh, Phoebe. Fantastic young actress. For a kid, I'm assuming she's probably still preteen, somewhere thereabouts. She is so damn good. She is so good. There are points of this movie that, like, she is having to act within the movie. And, like, she is doing everything so awkwardly and convincingly it's fantastic considering the probable age difference and I'm gonna go with a directorial difference she was significantly better than the young lady who played Sprite in Eternals I know we're going Ghostbusters Marvel whatever the point is young actress even one significantly older versus a young actress the personality was great in like her her character developing throughout the movie was all really good and she had some some story beats in there that were just fantastic you know uh her little friend that she makes unfortunately I, I don't know the kid's name i didn't look it up just yet and my internet is sleeping um the kid who plays podcast he's deliberately annoying at first he's meant to be He's meant to be very egocentric, but also lonely. It's actually so funny. So, in a way, he's like the Vankman character. He's like... So, every... Just, just getting it out of the way now, all of the kid characters are an analog to some degree of the original Ghostbusters. The obvious being Phoebe, being Egon. The original trailer is really spoiled that she is little Egon. Um, and that's fine. Uh, her her actual introduction in the movie is actually pretty cool. Um, Finn Finn Wolfhard's character um, can't think of his name. So this is one problem. The older kids, I keep forgetting their names. So the so Finn Wolfhard's character and then his love interest. Um, I think her name might have been Bunny, or maybe it was Lucky. They only say her name like twice. It's a kind of an oddball thing. So she's the young uh, black girl. Uh, I say young. She's in her teens. Uh, more than likely 20s. Like uh, Finn. Um, 
she's actually really good. She's a she's kind of a Janine. She, well, hold on. She's she's not exactly a uh, Janine analog, but she's definitely the uh, the the badass female uh, analog, you know, as it goes. Uh, and then Finn Wolfhard is he's 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 more of the Winston of the of the group, which is pretty interesting. Um, so we end up having four kids, kind of along for this ride the other ones don't really matter they're just sort of there the background children they're good okay so their mom who is egon's daughter um she definitely has issues uh and they make those very clear throughout this movie and she in a way works through them uh but not really and that's fine she just kind of has a she has a story but her character doesn't change versus her point of view changes due to the events of the movie. That's fine. Uh, and then, of course, Ant-Man is in this. And I almost mean that deliberately because I think Paul Rudd is reaching that level where he's just Paul Rudd and everything now. In fact, I think that he's still the same character even all the way back from 40-year-old um, virgin almost. Uh, you know, I will say this, though. Brilliant, brilliant product placement in this movie. Brilliant. And I was like, I cannot believe they did this. I'll drop it now. It's not really a spoiler. It's not really a part of anything. It just happened to be a thing. And you've seen part of this in the trailer. He's in Walmart at one point, and some spooky things happen within this Walmart. That is completely fucking empty, by the way. They literally have him looking at Baskin Robbins ice cream. I was like, come on. That's so meta. It's so, so damn good. Uh, I love that. Okay, so moving on. His, his character is fine. He's, he's the nerdy character who's excited about everything. He's the one who has the history of the knowledge of the, of the uh, Ghostbusters. You know, he was the fanboy. So for him to just literally happen upon Egon's family and then bumble his way into what is going on because he's he's already doing a thing within the movie related to the plot he just doesn't know it yet because he doesn't know what's going on he's just investigating and then all the pieces start coming together as the characters all sort of come together so let's talk about plot all right so within the plot of this movie egon passes away we know that happens they kind of get that out of the way right at the beginning. But then that whole thing, the whole opening chunk of this movie, without going too deep into what happens, other than the fact that we get Egon passing away, it leaves you with a whole, what just happened? Like, this picks up, you know, what, 20 years, 30 years later, right? You know, after this. This movie does sort of pretend the second movie never happened, which I'm kind of on board for. I like the second movie, but it only acknowledges the events of the first movie with the whole Gozer, uh, the whole Gozer invasion of New York. That's the only thing they cover. They don't cover the second movie at all. That doesn't even matter. Um, you could even say this movie still also kind of follows the, the Xbox video game that was, that should be considered canon absolutely should be considered canon because it still follows the Ivo, Ivo Shandor, Evo Shandor storyline. And that's where this movie still goes. You get this in, in the trailer where you see Shandor Mines. We find out that this town was literally founded by and built by Shandor and his corporation and all the things that happens within. So, Sh Shandor... It's, it's Shandor all the way down. We'll put it that way. So this continues the Gozer storyline because the cult of Shandor worships Gozer. And it ties into what happened to the Ghostbusters when all that was over. And that's kind of where we go. We go to how did Egon end up in a farm, dirt farm, in Oklahoma? from New York 
and yes, we absolutely get that answer. It's a little, it's it's literal exposition from another character, but it's fine. I actually really appreciated that. It was so good, like just, and like you could tell, like is <laughs> how we get there is ever so slightly convoluted. How we get to that truth, but they build it up, and I love it. Like this movie has a lot of setups and a lot of payoffs. It really does. I don't even think there was anything left un, un, undealt with, realistically. There, there's even moments where you're like, they, they, you get, you get some exposition, and then there's payoff to the exposition, which is great. Um, there's details. There's a few details that are like, how did that happen? And then you kind of get that answer. So there's, there's a little bit of murkiness in there, and you go, okay. But I think virtually every plot point through the movie is set up and paid off. And it's good. It's really good. There's only a couple small convoluted things that you can tell were just edited a little funny, in my opinion. It was kind of a out of convenience. And then this over here. So... We have uh, Phoebe going off her first day of summer school. Why she's got to go to summer school, I don't know. Uh, the other kid, that Finn Wolfhard's character. I don't know why I can't think of his name. It just wasn't important to me. He applies for a job at basically the only place for him to work, and that's the diner in town. And so he goes to work, she goes to school. Um, and that's how she, of course, runs into Ant-Man. And that's how we get there. It's actually kind of funny, you know. And this whole story takes place over the course of, like, four days. Not not counting the intro. The intro was a little separated, probably by a couple months at that. Maybe a couple weeks. That the, uh, the, the sense of time is really only a few days. Like, it's within one week. Which I feel like they should have had a little bit more time to lay it out. But given what's going on within the movie, it makes sense that it gets a little rushed near the end and you're like, okay, literally the ball is now rolling. We got to go. So while within the movie, you know that the kids start discovering stuff, you know, whether it's the Ecto one in the barn, whether it's the ghost trap, all of that is laid out very well. It really is. And what's interesting, they show well, within the, within the trailers, you see upgrades. So we see the Ecto-1, who now has a gunner seat, which is pretty cool. You also, I'm pretty sure they, they showed off the fact that there's now a remote-controlled trap to catch things on the move, which is really interesting and difficult. If you played any of the games, you know how hard it is to actually drag a damn ghost into a trap you know, so if you could have a moving trap, that's actually kind of useful rather than a stationary trap. Um, they show some evolution of their technology, which is cool. These story beats with the characters, you know, how they've all fallen into where they are in life is covered. And in a way, it's about discovering who you are. At least for Phoebe. Um, because they don't know. Tiny spoiler. They don't know their grandpa. Never met him. Left their mom long ass time ago. Like when she was a kid. Um, they don't know who he is. They don't know about the Ghostbusters. I wouldn't even be surprised if mom made an active choice. To keep them away from any Ghostbusters stuff. Because they didn't even want them to remotely look up who their grandpa was and i'll tell you this they never never say their last name they don't throughout the entire movie the family as far as i know never say their last name it wouldn't be spangler unless mom went with that so egon was the dad but obviously she got married at some point and that's how we end up here um they do, you know, it's it's no surprise the toy spoiled this. 
that the old Ghostbusters are involved, and even the trailer show you Janine is involved. That all kind of happens. Um, Janine's involvement is kind of amusing to a degree, and then you realize, ooh, that's a, that's a little fucked up. Um, they never, this is not a spoiler for anything in particular, it's just something I found interesting about the movie, and it was kind of in the, in the plot, but never talked about. They talk about the kid's dad being gone, but they don't ever talk about what happened to their grandmother, or who their grandmother was. And I find that strange. Never brought up. And it's not who you think it is. And I actually argued this point with somebody on a podcast. I was like, no. they Janine's in this movie. But not how you think she is. And not down the line. And unfortunately, they never mentioned Lewis. So they kind of let Rick Moranis go. I was really hoping they would have a Rick Moranis cameo. At this one point, and they didn't. I was, I was kind of sad. I was like, "Come on, just give us a cameo. Just, just, just come and play along. You're in New York. You could do this." He does live in New York at least part of the time, so they could have, they could have done that. Like I said, the, everything is. I'm, tr- I'm, I'm rolling through the movie in my head right now, and I'm trying to figure out if there's any plot points that are not paid off, without spoiling anything. And I don't, I don't think there are. I think they literally. If there was a setup to something, I believe it was all paid off. Like, all of it. Like, there's some things that were just kind of, boop, here we go, here it is. And then you're like, okay. There's references, there's callbacks, there, especially in Egon's lab, which you do see in the trailer, so that's not a surprise. Uh, how we get to that point, ever the tiniest bit of convolution, if that's even a thing. But it, it makes sense how it works. Um... The inclusion of a main character in a very unique way, in my mind. I really do love it. And yes, it's entirely Slimer. Um, Because don't you know Slimer is the secret hero of the Ghostbusters franchise in general? He even pops in from a different dimension. And by the way, I'm going to say this. um, Apparently... And this was when I was doing a little bit of research for something entirely unrelated. It was I was looking up stuff about the Ecto-1 and how there were different models of the Ecto-1 itself. How there were even potentially multiple Ecto-1s at one point. Like they had two of them at least. And then why... Oh, it was, it was at the beginning. The teasers for this movie in the first place when they showed the Ecto-1. But it wasn't the Ecto-1B. It was actually the Ecto-1A again. It was like, How? I was like, wait, how did it go back to being this? And technically, this should have been the Ecto-1C, in my opinion, because it has upgrades the original didn't have. So, at one point, there probably existed multiple Ecto-1s, even though that's not canon to the movie universe. That's canon to the comics. In the comics, multiple Ecto-1s existed. Also, multi-dimensional, multi-universal Ghostbusters. That is a thing that we could technically have if we want to. If we want to call the 2016 movie in the Ghostbusters multiverse. This movie and the previous movies that dealt with other dimensions, technically speaking, even the cartoons covered multiple dimensions. If we followed that storyline at all, it would be awesome in the future so that we can have Ghostbusters from different dimensions. And maybe even include the weirdo, not the real Ghostbusters, but the other guys who hunted ghosts with the gorilla. That would be a very funny cameo. Now we've talked about characters. We've talked about the plot overall, but not trying to spoil how it goes. This movie's brand new. I'm not going to give anything away. I will be doing a spoiler review right after this. Uh, If you want to watch that, I'm going to put it up on members uh, for a while. At least, if you want to join the channel membership, please do. Help support the channel. And also, uh, I'll be putting up a lot more content there as it goes. So, if you're remotely interested and you got 20 minutes into this video, it is what it is. So, do I have any grievances with this movie? You guys know I shit on the Eternals movie pretty badly. Um, Other movies and other TV shows I've been very, very critical of. So, you would expect me to not just absolutely love this movie. And you're mostly right. So, 
Complaints. Without being too specific. Because I don't want to spoil anything, I'm just going to say. Uh, the minor contrivances, the coincidences in this movie just kind of annoyed me. There were some things that just like, really? That's how this would happen? Uh, one other thing, and it's not going to be too, it's not really a spoiler. Uh, this town is supposedly pretty small, but it is not so small that a 10 year old kid could walk many miles between destinations. No problem during the day. And they tried to explain that away by this, you know, the kid has a, a scooter, but it's definitely not a two-person scooter, or at least it doesn't really look like it. And you're telling me that these kids and the mother didn't bother to check to see where her kid went all day long. Like, I know she's got her own issues, but she's doing stuff. How would you not go pick your kid up? You dropped your kid off. Not only that, you know, the the other kid is supposedly at work and then is off doing other things. She is a very... You know what? That's a problem with this movie. So, at one point, Ant-Man tells her that she is a good mom. She's a terrible mom. At least in the context of the couple days in this movie. Yeah, she's struggling with her own bullshit. I think even Phoebe calls her out on it at some point. Like, she is caring, and but she's also really tired of what's going on. Like, she's so pissed off at the at life and that it's gotten to this point. And I'm going to be honest, it, that bitch ain't doing everything she could for herself. She's not. Like, just in general. It, and it's funny how some of the stuff that is in this movie is definitely hand-me-down kind of things from other characters. And it makes sense. The fact that she kind of doesn't take responsibility the way she should for her own actions, for how she got here in the first place, it's, it's weird. Like, it, the movie really doesn't make the mom to be out that good of a character. Like, a dog, she's really not that good of a person within the movie. She doesn't, like, hurt her kids or anything like that, but, like, she's got two kids, one that's, you know, almost driving age. Whoops. Uh, and another that is blossoming, like, in, in, in like, a, a very, very intelligent child who definitely needs some type of nurturing, but doesn't seem to be getting it wherever they are. I don't even know if they cover what city they were in to begin with. I think it might have been in California. I'm not sure. But it would make more sense if it was in New York. They might have said it. I don't. Either way, that doesn't matter. So, either way, I think that they make her out to not be the best character. She's not even the best mom. At least when it comes to checking in on her kids, she does admit to some alcoholism, which, fine, if you're dealing with a lot of bullshit. But you can also tell that she doesn't have anybody good in her life. So, it is what it is. If there's no one good in your life, and you're doing the best you can, that's one thing. But if you're using that as an excuse to just try to roll through life you know, with as little responsibility as possible, even though you have a responsibility to at least two other lives. Come on, lady. Just 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 be better. That's all I can say. Just be just be better as a character and, and going off of this movie and what happens, I would not doubt that she definitely will be getting better. You know, it, it just makes sense after this movie. This movie is about finding yourself and moving through things instead of just dealing with everything alone. And yes, if you've seen the movie, you know that that was a reference. So, other things. Uh, I could see where a couple of things were going to happen. Several things were predictable. Other things were not. There were some really big surprises in this movie, and I don't mean that in a literal sense, like they weren't large, um, which is something I thought might happen. I was like, please bring back a destroyer of some sort. It'd be so funny to see some big ass destroyer thing just coming out of nowhere in the fields of Oklahoma. I think that would just be funny. Because uh, in this in this universe, like people have stopped believing in ghosts other than the crackpots, you know? 
But like I said, most almost everything that I can think of out of the movie that was set up as a plot point, and sometimes even just a passing comment, like a, almost all of the things were paid off that I can think of. I can't really... Th the only thing... There's one problem that I can consider right near the end that is... There's no time to explain, so they just let it happen. And that would be my only main complaint. Obviously, I'll cover a lot of these things in the spoiler review where I'll really go into depth about the movie. You know, obviously, I want to keep this to no more than 30 minutes if I can. I know it's hard to even do this, but a lot of people do like a quick, concise thing. I'm doing what I can here, people. Come on. Other than that, I mean, like, some of the CG was a little eh, but it's Ghostbusters, so who cares? I think the ghost... Their effort at the ghosts, however few there literally were on screen, were actually pretty good. The CG Stay Puft Marshmallows, uh, when they were up close and focusing exclusively on them, actually not bad at all. They actually look really good. As soon as they put them next to something real, it's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it's like, that's standing out quite a bit. Um, but it's fine. It, they were, it was still fine. It, d it didn't take me out of the moment. In fact, I enjoyed... Well, yeah, I'll talk about it in spoilers. Woo, good lord. There's some dark stuff in this movie. There is some really dark stuff, and it's not where you would expect it to be. And there's one inclusion of a character that I just went, are you going to do something cool with this? And then they go, no. So that's my only major, major thing about that. But what's funny about that particular instance and I'll once again spoilers and please guys I know I should have said this down below I'll probably include this at the beginning hey guys look there's a no, non-spoiler review if you want to discuss it in the comments please do not use spoilers at all this is a brand new movie you know if you want to actually come and talk about it on the discord we can do that discord is linked down below okay there we go I put that at the front it is what it is so if you saw that and then you get the reference to this point, you're good. So ultimately, this movie was really good. It was a great final sequel to the Ghostbusters uh, duology, because apparently we're not calling it a trilogy anymore. Seemingly, like I said, the events of the second movie don't seem to play at all into this, and I find that so bizarre. There's only one other thing that is stated and then not follow through technically speaking and that is uh it's not really a spoiler they just say that something has become a something and then they show that something and it's clearly not that's the only it, it's dumb but i it can't it pointed out in my mind and i'm like wait that was a nice line but it's not true technically speaking so it is what it is. So, guys, come, if you want to check out the spoiler review, it will be over on the members segment. Uh, so, if you want to join up, join up for the memberships. I've got a whole lot of out-the-box stuff there. I'll have the spoiler review over there, at least for the time being. And uh, going to be doing a lot more stuff on, on the members-only part of the channel. But I'll catch you guys next time. Remember, as always, keep on busting. That's right.